you do see opportunity in UK domestic focused businesses. Yes. Where exactly are, are, you, uh, are you specifically looking to be exposed? So we run uh, UK funds that are across both small, medium and large companies. And those small and medium companies tend to be more exposed to the domestic UK. And I'm quite happy with that at the moment because I think the signs are and it is early days. But since the election, it seems like the UK economy is gently improving. And there's been a variety of data points that suggest that things like house prices, the GDP data yesterday, consumer confidence is ticking up. And when you're thinking about the kinds of stocks that would be most exposed to this, the domestic banks would be a good example. So, for example, we've been adding to our position in RBS. It's got results on Friday from the new CEO. It's expected that they will announce quite a big strategy change. So, for example, scaling back NatWest markets. So that's uh, domestic banks is an area that we're quite interested in at the moment. We're also interested in things like the house builders. We mm. hold Taylor Wimpy, we hold Bellway. Uh, so that house price data is really quite encouraging and that should be good for the house building sector. And, and, and also more generally in, in the construction space, I saw Liberum today talking about a golden age for UK infrastructure. We heard about HS2 yep. yesterday getting approval with some tweaks. Is that an area that you think, is that all priced in I suppose to that sector? I don't think so yet. I think there's such a degree of scepticism about contractors in the UK, given the widespread failures. You know, we've had Carillion, we've had Interserve. So there is a real reluctance among the UK fund management community to own contractors, given the widespread failure that there has been. So no, I think it will take quite a while for confidence to return to that sector. And we'll really need to see a number of years of contractors actually delivering on their margin targets and not taking on too complex contracts that end up being heavily loss making. I think it will take quite a, quite a while. Our portfolio managers going to be scared away from financials as this equivalence issue. Surely it's going to keep coming up over the next months, over the next year. I think it really depends on the financial that we're talking about. So if we're talking about Lloyd's, RBS, it's really not an issue for those types of companies. They're very domestically focused anyway. They wouldn't be selling into continental Europe. Whereas for other financials, and I'm counting fund managers within this, to be honest, it would be much more relevant. What I've learned from last year, though, is that I'm not going to be paying too much attention to this back and forth because we will be hearing so much noise over the next few months as these debates go on. And last year, I spent my whole year trying to work out what the direction of Brexit negotiations would be. And ultimately, it was not a good use of time because the focus should really be on where the value is. And I still think domestic UK equities look good value at this point. If only, if only we could ignore it. Um, unfortunately, I don't see that happening. Laura, what do you then, what do you want to focus on? I mean, what do you get up excited about? Um, what's, your, what's your best idea, something that you pitch to your friends? I'm excited about UK smaller companies. I think they've really been left behind. And, you know, we saw a very strong rally in UK equity markets, particularly after the general election last year. And actually, smaller companies didn't fully keep up with that. I think there's been a bit of an overhang on smaller companies in the UK. And actually, the valuations there are at quite a big discount to the rest of the UK market. So I think that is the area that I'm quite excited about that we've been adding to in the funds.